Hey guys, Captain JJB84 here, talking about Captain America Civil War, because you know, it's the movie that everyone wants to see, because Iron Man and Captain America, they're going to fight. Okay, it's a little more, more in depth than that, but the film as a whole, it's good. It's, a, it's pretty good. <laughs> I do find myself in the minority, though. I think Winter Soldier is the better film now. Um, yeah, I, I, um, but, you know, more on that later. I mean, I'm seeing it again tonight, so maybe my view will change, but I remember just coming out of this thinking, like, all right, how about compare it to other films, and I immediately thought, Winter Soldier, I'm like, I think Winter Soldier did some stuff better. But we'll get more on that maybe in the spoiler review. Uh, anyways, Captain America Civil War. Well, I guess pretty much everyone knows this film, what it's essentially about. Uh, governments, or the UN, rather, or uh, General Ross. Yeah, William Hurt, he's in this movie, you know, from the Incredible Hulk movie that <laughs> Marvel tries to say, oh yeah, yeah that happened. <laughs> uh, he's in this, and he, he uh, is the Secretary of uh, State to the U.S., and um, he brings this, uh, what's called the Sokovia Accord. Basically, it's that uh, the, uh, the Avengers now have to be uh, registered with the UN, um, and they basically have to have missions approved and whatnot. And, of course, Captain America is against this. Iron Man is all for this. And it did the... When I first heard, um... When I first heard the premise and started reading that, I'm like, okay, Captain America's for this. Why is I... Sorry, Captain America's against it. Iron Man's for it. I'm like, why is Iron Man for it? And, yeah, don't say, oh, it was like that in the comic. I mean, um, I've never read the comic. Uh, but it's more just so like, you know, how Iron Man has been built up through all uh, the various films. I kept sitting there thinking, going, why is this guy like, oh, why is he so much like, oh yeah, th we need to do this, we need to be reined in. I'm just like, you've caused more destruction and damage <laughs> more than any of the other ones. But that, that actually is sort of answered in this film. Like, you know, he feels responsible. So, of course, uh, there's a great divide between, uh, the two sides, and they all sort of line up with their respective leader, I guess you could say, uh, on uh, teams on Team Iron Man. You know, you got Black Widow, you got uh, War Machine, Vision, Black Panther, and Spider Man. We'll talk about him in a minute. And on Team Cap, you got Falcon, uh, Winter Soldier, Hawkeye, Scarlet Witch, Winter Soldier, and uh, Agent Thirteen or Sharon Carter. I guess she, well, she's not really, you know, she's not in the airport scene, so. Anyways, what does this film do good? Well, just that. It feels like a much more mature, like, ideological film as much as it is, like, you know, the, you know, you get the, you know, you, yeah, you do get the two sides fighting, but it feels much more, it feels all, as much as a mental battle as it is a physical battle. You see where these two sides are coming from, and it's kind of like, yeah, you do have to pick a side. Granted, how it's portrayed in the film, it feels more just like, well, hey, um, <laughs> Captain America seems a little more right in this case, because you're not exactly the best uh, kept example, uh, Stark, but, you know, like I said, he feels responsible for all the shit he's caused. Anyways, Bucky soon gets back into the picture, and that's where things really get complicated. I introduce a few other characters along the way, including Black Panther, Spider-Man, and even this strange villain named Baron Zemo. We got ourselves a goddamn superhero movie. What else? What do I like? <clears throat> well, the performances, they're all great. The characters are also good. Uh, Tom Holland as Spider-Man? Fantastic. <laughs> um, yeah, he was a bit of a selling point for people. It's like, oh my god, Spider-Man's in the movie! I'm like, huh, I've never seen Spider-Man in a movie before. Well, I guess you could argue saying, well, we've never seen Spider-Man with a bunch of other superheroes in a movie before. I guess, whatever. Uh, Chadwick Boseman is fantastic as Black Panther. Um, he kind of steals the show. Uh, there's this fantastic scene. It's like, um, I don't want to... Yeah, it, it was shown in a TV spot, so um, I will spoil it, I guess. Just, you know, spoiler, I guess. There's this great bit where it's like, you know, you first see him as Black Panther. You know, he's chasing down this great uh, sort of like underground roadway chase. You've probably seen a few of the trailers. Um, Captain America's there, Falcon's there, Winter Soldier, and... Black Panther, and they all get caught, and then Black Panther decides to surrender, but then he takes off his mask, revealing to everyone that, hey, I'm the king of Wakanda. It's great. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, the themes and ideas presented, you know, they feel 
Yeah, they do feel sort of realistic, I guess, but it contained within, you know, the logic of, you know, superhero logic, basically. Um, and uh, what else? Yeah, the fights, the fight, the action scenes are all fantastic. Fight scenes are great, especially the airport scene. <laughs> uh, yeah, that pretty much... Yeah, you haven't really seen much of it from the previews. Um, but, you know, it might have been spoiled in some Lego sets. Just saying. Uh, what else? Humor, as expected. And sometimes it feels a little out of place, particularly in the airport scene. I'm just like, alright, these two sides are trying to kill each other. Why are they making jokes? I know you need some levity, but come on, a little seriousness wouldn't hurt. Um, and Baron Zemo is actually a halfway decent villain. I mean, yeah, he's no Loki. I don't think anything's gonna top Loki. Um, but, you know, he's actually, you know, there's like, you know, there's like a method to him. There's like, you know, it's interesting to see what he has planned. And, um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, now for some of the things I didn't like as much, <laughs> I guess, I don't know how to segue into that. Um, the first 30 minutes or so for me just felt, I don't know, the first like 30 minutes just felt weirdly paced and they felt unfocused a lot. I'm just like, you know, stuff's happening, you know, it's exposition a lot of the stuff, but it just sort of jumps around. I'm just like, all right, where's the, where's the focus? Where's the narrative exactly? I don't know. The, just the first 30 minutes or so just felt like that. After that, it sort of clears up and like, um. Uh, like, yeah, it's the first 30 minutes, and then it sort of picks up a bit, and then, like, the second half of the movie, you know, it's all just smooth sailing from there. Uh, it's very, it's fairly lengthy as well, two and a half hours, just saying. And, uh, on the topic of Spider-Man, is look, as much as I like Tom Holland as uh, Spider-Man, as great as he was, the scenes were great, the dialogue was great, he felt shoehorned in. I don't know, it's just like, I kept thinking, I was asking myself, I'm like, if you took him out of the movie, would it be too different? The answer is no, not really. And, yeah, I, this was expected. I figured, yeah, okay, he'll he'll probably do some cool stuff, but it might just feel like a commercial for his solo film. And, <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> but, you know, I think, you know, this was, uh, you know, that deal between Sony and Marvel happened, you know, it happened while Civil War was filming, so, go figure, I guess. But, it's just how I see it, I guess. He just, like, I feel like you could take... He's only really in it for, like, three scenes at best. Just saying. Not like Black Panther, though. Black Panther feels like... Like he belongs in this movie. He's just, you know, he's an interesting character. It's neat to see where he's coming from. Just him trying to, like... I guess... Absorb everything that's around him. The Avengers and everything they do. Uh, some of the action looks a little too CGI at times. And sometimes I'm just like... <laughs> I hate to bring up the word realism, but, you know, you see guys fall from, like, f like heights of 50 feet, and I'm just like, oh, he's fine? He landed on his stomach, but I guess he's fine. Um, and, uh, Black Widow. Yeah, I just, not, I don't like Black Widow <laughs> as a character. Um, but maybe more on that some other time. But yeah, Civil War as a film, I think it's good. Is it Marvel's best film? I don't know. Like I said, I think I like Winter Soldier a bit more, but, you know... I'm going to be watching it again tonight, so maybe my view will change on that. But as it stands, it's pretty good. It's a damn good movie. Um, definitely, uh, I wouldn't say their boldest or even, like, riskiest film. I felt, I don't know, I think, hell, even, like, Iron Man 3 or Winter Soldier took a few more risks than this film. Um, but, uh, you know, it's enjoyable, and it's exciting to see, you know, the lasting effect this film will have on the, <laughs> the rest of the MCU, I guess, because, you know, a theoretically infinite franchise. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but, yeah, it's enjoyable, and um, uh, I can't wait to see it again tonight, and I'm um, seeing it again Monday as well with a few friends and my little bro. So, uh, yeah, what do you guys think? I don't know. Um, sorry if I'm all over the place, but, you know, just in a hurry. That's why we're approaching the nine-minute mark. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Civil War was... Great. All right. See you later.